Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents. Can materials made of the same elements have different properties? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the Journal of the American Chemical Society, published on January 14, 2022. Research conducted by Connor Stubbs, Joshua Warch, and others from the School of Chemistry at the University of Birmingham in the UK. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Did you know that everything around you contains special molecules called polymers? These molecules form long chains that make up plastic, protein, and even your DNA. The great thing about polymers is that we can design them to have properties we need. But the polymers we design can sometimes have a negative impact on the environment. That is why we wanted to see if we can create different polymers from the same natural product, such as a sugar. We wanted to determine how the placement of atoms in the polymers affected their properties. We found that by rearranging the atoms of a monomer, we could get two different polymers. One behaved like a stiff plastic, and the other behaved like stretchy rubber. The results of our research made us realize that the placement of atoms does change a polymer's properties. It also proved that we can make strong and flexible polymers for more natural materials. Introduction. Polymers are an important part of our world. They make up our food, our clothes, and even our money. Polymers are large molecules that are long chains of repeating units called monomers. Polymers can be natural or synthetic, which means humans made them. One of the most common synthetic polymers is plastic. Plastic is so common because it is strong and can be molded into all kinds of useful shapes, from car parts to milk containers. Another type of synthetic polymers are flexible and elastic. These are called elastomers and are commonly found in sneakers. The properties of a polymer depend on the monomer that it contains and the organization of those monomers in the chain. We wanted to determine if the placement of the atoms in a monomer could change the properties of a polymer. We also wanted to see if a natural compound like sugar could be the basis for these polymers. Here in the picture, you can see the carbohydrates and protein in your food are examples of natural polymers. You can see examples of foods with these polymers in the upper photo. Plastics are examples of synthetic polymers, and examples of these can be seen in the lower photo. Methods. We created two monomers that were stereoisomers. Stereoisomers are two molecules that have all the same atoms, but arranged differently. We started with two sugar-based units called isohexides. Using a chemical reaction, we inserted the isohexide into a larger molecule. Then, using a series of chemical reactions, we turned this monomer into a polymer. Because the polymer formed a chain, we used the word linear in the name we gave it isomanide based linear polymer, IMPU. We made the second polymer with a similar process, only we switched the position of the oxygen atoms in the isohexide. This polymer was also linear, so we called it isoiodide based linear polymer, IIPU. Once we collected our new polymers and formed them into films, we tested their properties. We placed a film of each polymer into a device that holds it at each end. Then the device slowly pulled the film until it broke. This technique allowed us to measure many properties such as the tensile strength of the polymers. Tensile strength is the amount of force needed to break a material when pulled. We also measured how much the long chains got tangled, which can affect the strength of the polymer. After we determined the properties of the two polymers, we used a simulation to analyze their structure. 
This simulation helped us determine why the polymers had different properties. Here in figure one, you can see the chemical structure of the isoiodide on the top and isomanide on the bottom. In each chemical structure, the orange balls represent oxygen atoms and the purple balls indicate carbon atoms. The gray connections represent the bonds between the molecules. The arrows indicate that what is represented is just one monomer. To create the polymer, monomers would be continually added to each end of the chain. Looking at these structures, can you figure out why isoiodide and isomanide are considered stereoisomers? Results. We found that isomanide-based linear polymer behaved like the bottom of sneakers, which is a tough rubbery material. We also found that isoiodide-based linear polymer behaved like the plastic that they used to make food and beverage containers, such as milk cartons. That means IIPU was a relatively stiff material. When we compared how well IMPU and IIPU chains tangled, we found that IIPU chains were less tangled than IMPU. Discussion. Our experiment showed that changing the placement of atoms in a monomer can change the property of a polymer. That's because the placement of the atoms affects how the polymer chain interacts with itself and other polymer chains. Our simulation showed that IIPU forms long, straight chains that can pack tightly together. This packing caused it to behave more like a hard plastic. IMPU wasn't able to pack as well because the chains tended to twist and coil on themselves. This twisting formed temporary links between parts of the same chain. When we stretched the polymer, these links would break. New links then formed between other chains of IMPU. When we stopped stretching the IMPU, the links between chains would break. Then, the chains would twist and form links again within individual chains. The ability to break and form these links gave IMPU the ability to behave like an elastic band. Here is an example of what happened in the simulation when the polymers were stretched out. The colors represent the different atoms and the bonds between them. Our research also proved that we can make useful polymers in a way that is better for the environment. Because we made IMPU and IIPU from monomers derived from sugars, they will be more biodegradable. That means that living organisms such as bacteria can break them down. Currently, most of the human-made polymers come from oil and are not biodegradable. Having more biodegradable polymers can reduce the impact of our materials on the environment in the future. Conclusion Polymers are such an important part of the way we make things now and will in the future. That means how we design them is also important. As we throw things away, we need to be aware that they might not break down in the environment, or when they do, they might negatively impact our ecosystems. That is why making polymers like IMPU and IIPU is so important. How can you use polymers and protect the environment? While we continue to redesign polymers, you can check the labels on the products you buy to see if they contain biodegradable polymers. If they aren't, make sure that you recycle whatever you can. And remember that reducing and reusing are always the best way to limit the amount of polymers entering the environment. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.